In this video I'm going to show you how to change the heating element in this Beko ODF 22300X oven. And it's quite a common fault for the heating element to go in these ovens and if your oven's coming on, the fans go in, the lights on, but it's just not heating up, chances are your heating element is gone. I'll show you how to change that now. Safety first, turn the cooker off at the mains. That'll isolate it so you don't end up electrocuting yourself. The best thing to do first is take the doors off the oven. I've covered that in another video, a link to which should be appearing now. To remove the top door is exactly the same as how you remove the bottom door. Uh, it also makes it a little bit lighter when you're trying to lift the oven because you will have to take the oven out because you do need to get behind it as well. That's not always the case with the heating elements on other ovens, but with this one you do have to unscrew it from behind. So now we'll take all the shelves out as well. You'll have easier access if you remove the shelf racks by here. So if you just pull that out like so, sits in that lug there, look, and then just slide it out. Same on the other side. To access the heating element, you're going to need to remove this cover here. Now there's four screws holding that on. There's one there, tucked in. There's one by there. There's one there. And then there's one down there as well. They're all Phillips heads and they shouldn't be too difficult to get out. When you're undoing the last screw, you will have to hold the cover in place because it'll fall otherwise. Like so. Let it bring it away. And then here's the heating element. And this is the fan. No prizes for guessing that. Now you can see by here where the heating element has failed. It's burnt out and melted and all charred by there. So if your heating element looks like that, that needs changing. So the heating element is held in in two places. Got up here, you can see the screw head sticking through from the other side. And then down here, you've got a screw, which is a Phillips screw that you can undo now. With that screw undone, the work at the front of the oven is actually finished. Now we need to pull the oven out so we can access behind. So to remove the oven, we're going to need to take out two screws. One there, and one there, which are holding it in the frame. Before you remove the oven, remove any trim that's getting in the way. In our case, it's just a bit of trim there. Now that's just resting in there. Not my installation, that was here when we moved in. What we've got then, is we can just pull the oven, like so. And it's not so heavy, it's more awkward, so you probably will need an accomplice to be able to help you lift it out onto maybe a table or a workbench or something like that. Be careful when you are pulling it out, make sure that you've got plenty of wire going to the back of the oven, that you've got the length there to be able to get it out. You don't want to go pulling the wire out of the oven. Once the oven's out and resting on something secure like this workbench, you can access the back of it now and undo all these screws. There's 13 in total, so there's one there, there, and there, there, and there. The top cover will slide off like so. Remove that and put it out of the way. This cover, on the other hand, when you take the last screw out, do this one, and then it's actually on like a hinged joint there. So you can do it without having to remove all the wiring and everything, and you can access the screws now. The screws holding the heating element in are inside there. So we will need to remove these connectors here. Don't forget to take note which way round the wires go. Take a photo or write it down. Yellow in this case is on the bottom, and the grey one's on the top. If you pull away some of the fireproof material, and you can see the screws holding the heating element in. First thing to do though, is take these spade connectors off. Go careful. Put the Phillips screwdriver in there. And undo the screw. Carefully remove it, you don't want to lose that down the back. 
hold the heating element so that it doesn't fall down in the oven and again remove the screw right leave that there like that you can now withdraw the heating element from the oven just like so if we compare the two heating elements next to each other you can clearly see where this one has failed this is what the new heating element should look like two perfect rings this one as you can see has failed by there there are three prongs on this but the middle one is redundant so don't worry about that doesn't need to be connected to anything reinstalling is reversal of removal Just slot that in there making sure that slots through it won't hold there by itself so you might need to get somebody to hold it for you get somebody to line it up from behind then carefully put the screw in and do it up don't have to do it too tight at the moment and the other one careful not to cross thread them before you do these up tight it's always best to try and get this one in because otherwise you'll have trouble lining it up so once that's in then you can do those up nice and tight from behind right do that one up tight then redo that one up nice and tight and then try and pull some of that back over reconnect the cables so we add yellow on the bottom push it home and we add grey on the top push it home. Do one final check now, make sure those spades are on this as secure as they can be, make sure that that fireproofing is now covering those screws and any gaps and then you're ready to shut the door on the back. So pull the door shut, make sure you're not catching anything. Best one to put in first is this one down the bottom, like so. Do it up nice and tight because you don't want it to rattle and carry on with the rest. When you're doing this piece, there's a lip on the upper edge. So the lipped piece goes at the top, like so. And then best just to get one in, like that. And then go around and do the rest. Best to leave these top ones to last because you need to pull the top down to be able to clip it all in, just like so. Do that one and that one and we're done. Before everything goes back together it's worth giving all this bit a bit of a clean just to get any residue off. Also double check that that fan will turn and it's not catching the heating element anyway just in case it's misshapen. Okay put the cover back on now we've given it a bit of a clean. Offer it up making sure you don't catch it on the thermostat up there. Line up one of the screw holes, well all of them really line up that one Get nice and tight there we go so we do all the others now so we've got one two three four careful with that one because you don't want to catch the thermostat that's all screwed in now got the screw in all the screws done up just got to put the oven back in the slot now don't forget to secure the cooker back in place by putting your screws in here. Don't forget to fit the trim back on the top. Like so. All that's left to do is refit the doors and also refit the rails and the shelves to go on. Refit the shelving rack. Slide that end there in the middle. Onto the end there. Then line it up in the gap there and just shunt it home. Same on the other side and then pop the shelves back in. So we've turned the power back on, we've turned the oven on, we've set it to about 150 degrees. Just going to check to see if it's heated up in there. It looks like it has because the oven lights come out. So we'll see. Yeah, lovely and warm. Jobs are good then. Okay, the best thing to do now is turn the oven up to about 200, 220. Just let it burn off for about 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, maybe 20 minutes, just to burn off any of the smells that are inside or any dust that's landed anywhere where it shouldn't have been. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the box below. 
and don't forget to subscribe.